Hey, hey, how's it going, guys? How's it going? It is good to be back in the saddle again. Excuse me, I'm going to turn off my phone here for a second. I'm uh, here in the Crafty Bunch. We're doing a, a fun little uh, theme today. As usual, it's another spotlight event. And uh, I am right after a uh, tree that's, let me see, crafting with tree, that's me. I'm sorry. I'm kind of messed it up but I just got through watching her and she did a, the cutest little uh farmhouse round with the sheep and everything and it was really great so thank you for that and um as you guys are, are finishing up with her and coming on into the crafty bunch I really appreciate you guys um saying hello tell me where you're from uh, like I said I've been out of commission for about a week and a half I just sort of kind of like took a break I need to just take a break sometimes you just need to do that and plus you know my birthday and eat my birthday was yesterday Easter was last weekend so I just felt like I just needed to kind of just chill for a minute but I've got a lot of uh new projects uh and events going on thank you for sprinkling me there I do see myself in the crafty bunch so that's great I'm just giving everybody a chance to kind of pop on here and uh, after watching uh Miss Tree over there and thank you for that um for letting me know um about the event and everything so like I said the event today like I said is um it's a spotlight event and uh, Miss uh, Miss Christy Sloan from my Artful Adventures is who's up after me, by the way. It's her, um, her it's her idea and she is the spotlight presenter. So let's make sure that everybody goes over and uh, follows Christy and sees what she's all about. Christy is a hoot. I've found Christy. We kind of found each other in uh, another group a while back. And um, she's even tried a couple of my clay projects before with me personally. So, but she does wonderful paper, uh, paper crafting. She said she's been doing that for like 20 some years. She's very skilled at it, but she's also, there she is. Hey, Miss Christy, I love you, girl. You're just, you're so funny. You know, I love it because you're just so real. And, uh, and then of course you're very talented at the things that you do, but uh, it's just really fun to watch you. And so if you haven't watched her, make sure you go over and do that. So uh, yeah, we got her and then we got a whole lineup until six o'clock tonight. So you guys make sure that you stick around. If you're not part of the Crafty Bunch, go ahead and sign up. It's a free group. Um, if you do want to be a presenter, you can get with us on that, any of us, and then we can help you, give you, lead you the way into doing that. So, um, so the, the concept of this spotlight is actually something like a technique that's either something that's retro, like old school, or something new that maybe you have never tried before. Hey, Deborah, how's it going? Good to have you here. Thank you so much for the birthday kudos yesterday. I appreciate that. And all of you guys that give me uh, birthday wishes, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm loving that. I, I'm 62. I'm rocking, man. I'm 62. I'm getting my Social Security. <laughs> anyway, so back to the event. So the event, like I said, is, is, is a technique. We create a technique that's something either we've done before or not done before or new or old or something like that. It's kind of loose, but I've been seeing a lot of different things going on. So um, I've got something that I've been talking about if anybody follows me. Um, oh, thank you, darling. So do you. I, I'm actually like really in awe of the fact that you look so good. I mean, I know you exercise. I used to be a swimmer exerciser and I've kind of like gone down the tubes, but you're inspiring me to, you know, get back on the wagon again and, and walk and things like that. So, um, yeah, thank you for that, Miss Deborah. Anyway, um, so what am I doing here for this? this technique well if anybody uh is familiar with me you know i work primarily with clay i always have some sort of clay involved in my projects for the most part i think almost every live i got something to do with clay so today though i've been um talking about this a little bit in some of my other lives i'm actually going to incorporate decoupage on clay really yes you can decoupage on clay now, i'm working with polymer clay which is um it's a baked clay. In other words, you have to bake it in the oven. Um, and you could probably do it on air dry tray clay, but you have to wait till the air dry clay is actually um, dry. This is a technique that I'm going to show you. There's actually two ways to do it with the decoupage is um, you can do it on the clay when it's still tacky and raw, which is what I'm going to show you. Or technically, you could go ahead and bake your clay and just put it on your traditional way that you do it with your Mod Podge 
and and whatnot like you do any other type of type of decoupage with your napkins or everything you know everybody's really into decoupage and believe it or not even though decoupage is a very hot item hey michelle how are you doing thank you for sending me out there appreciate that girlfriend even though decoupage is actually a, you know a big hot item and it's a big in the crafting world um it's actually been around since the 1700s it's not a really new project my hair is like getting up in my way i just cut it but it's like bugging my eyeball so therefore uh but like i said so it's kind of an old technique but i'm going to show you a new way to do it and yeah you can actually do it on polymer clay so uh what i'm going to do is um i'm going to show you that and then i'm going to walk you through some other elements then i've got like this little flower bowl thing that i think i'll be able to whip out to to add to the piece itself so with all that being said i'm going to go ahead and uh put my screen down on my table so you guys can get a, a closer look at what i'm doing and uh, like I said, if you, you know, if you're not watching me uh, when I'm live and you see the little red button up in the corner there, if that's not there, then that's uh, you're watching me after the fact. So you can put in hashtag replay in the comments and I appreciate that. And I am just about 1500. I looked early today. I'm about 1500. I would hope that by the end of this live today that I will reach it because I was at 1499. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm, I've got 1500 followers and I'm looking for the next, you know, 500, 200, get, get built up there. So I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, getting me out there. All right. So now let's go ahead and get down to the project. Let's switch my camera over. Excuse me while I chew gum. I've got a, a throat issue and it helps cope my throat. So I'm not trying to be I really never. All right. So what have I got here? Well, I've, I've got clay. I got palm polymer clay. As you can see, like I normally do, I have a lot of it uh, already. Hey, Leah, how are you doing? It's good to have you here. If you're new to me, by the way, you're not familiar with me, what I'm doing, I'd really appreciate if you would just tap on your screen and hit the little uh, follow there and follow me. I'd really appreciate that. I work primarily with clay, so I teach people a lot of different things that they can do with polymer clay and some air dry clay every once in a while. All right. So. What have I got here? Well, what I did is I took my uh, Craftsmart. This is the Michaels brand, the white brand. And I um, I cut it in little slivers and I rolled it out with my rolling pin and I rolled it to a certain, you know, whatever I need it to be. I needed to have a pretty big slab, they call it, to get the shape here. And what I did is um, I drew me out a, like a little template laid it over the clay and cut that out okay so it was just a solid white piece of clay like these little guys are over here then i took my um my napkin these are just i have this little guy here i've got some couple samples for you this one and then uh this is just a little the dollar tree napkin here but i thought it was kind of pretty so i i took the napkin here and i i put it on the clay i'm going to show you a very small piece hi doris how are you it's good to have you here um, I'm going to show you in a small sample, like how you do that with the clay. And then this one has actually already been attached and baked. And I'm going to finish this one out. And then I should be able to show you how I'm going to take, uh, we're going to make like this little bowl guy here. And we're going to pop that on top like that. And it come out, you can have, uh, you know, there you could actually make this into a bowl shape if you wanted to, but I'm making it like a, a hanging piece for the wall. So that's kind of what we're going there. Alrighty, so okay, so you see that I've got this clay has been baked. It's it's hard. Uh, polymer clay has a little bit of flexibility, a little bit, especially if it's a if it's like a slab form like this, it has a little bit of bendability. Over time, it has a tendency to get a little bit harder, but it's not like ceramic clay. It'll never be like totally like you know rock hard kind of thing. So, uh, but it is you know very functional. Um, it can be functional, and it's very. Um, uh versatile that's what i'm looking for so you can do a lot with it so anyway so i've got this and i basically um i'm going to show you what i did right now with the small piece you can see i've got my um my little piece already cut out here of my napkin that i showed you a few minutes ago i'm going to be using that on this small piece here this is a little sample that i tried this one's already got the the sealer on it and i'll show you what i did with that I actually used a resin sealer did I use a resin on this? I think I used resin on this. If not, I think I might have used my poly, which is what we're going to do right now. And it, uh, you can see how it kind of shines up once you get the coating on there. All right, so that's that one. That one's actually been baked too. Now, here is a piece of raw clay. Okay, this is just, you know, your floppy clay that has not been baked. I just rolled it out a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do here is um, you don't have, like this one is just flat. I just literally put, the uh the flower on there i mean the the napkin on there and then just burnished it like i'm going to show you 
and then baked it. But I thought I'd do something a little extra with this one here is I've got a little stamp. I'm just gonna stamp this little guy here on the clay. It's probably not gonna matter because you might not see that through the napkin itself. But you know, part of this is a little bit of an experiment for me too. Uh, I've been, you know, working with stamps and clay and for a while, but to tell you the truth, I've never decoupaged with it. I've been watching some videos. And I'm like, you know, this is nothing. This is really pretty easy. So I've got my little impression there in the clay. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. I've got these little circle cutters and I probably won't be exactly even, but this is more, you know, just like a sample for you guys anyway. All right. So I've got that, but just think of the possibilities. If a person, you know, has not played with clay or if you're starting to get with play with clay, I'll tell you one thing. I'm excited because I'm starting to see a lot of more people uh, hopping on the clay wagon and doing a little bit more with the polymer clay than, um, or not even polymer, sometimes air dry, sometimes the foam clay, but just clay in general. And it makes my heart happy. Hey, Terry. Hey, girlfriend. I'm glad you're here. I was wondering if you're going to pop on. I saw you in the other, with the other girls. All right, so Terry, watch closely because I know you like working with the clay. I'm showing how to actually decoupage uh, with with the raw clay. Okay, like I said, you, if you had a piece that was already baked, you could traditionally do the the mod podge and decoupage like you always do. But this is a way to actually use the raw clay and put a napkin decoupage on there without um, without using mod podge. So basically what you're doing is you, you know, you get your piece, whatever it is that you want to put the uh, mod podge on the decoupage on, and you're going to turn it upside down. You're not going to turn it face up. Okay. Like you would normally do on a, on a decoupage, you turn it face down. And then you basically, like I said, the image on there that has the little stamp, it's probably not even going to be, you know, worth seeing, but you kind of burnish it and you can do this. With, if it's a small piece, you can just use your finger. If it's a bigger piece, I had a piece of paper over here, but take like a, a sheet of paper and just burnish it a little bit. Try to get it down there as best you can. And of course, you know, I'm realizing now that by burnishing it, I'm kind of taking off some of the stamped image. So that was probably like a, not really the best thing to do is put a stamp image on it. So you're basically just going to go with the image you got here. So I do love it. Yeah, and I saw your, your stuff you're doing. You're getting in there, girlfriend. Um, I'm starting to think about, again, I'm just trying to figure out my timing. I want to have a subscription group, a small, I did one um, over a year or so ago, and I just didn't uh, have the time to put into it. So I'm thinking about doing a subscription group again, where it would be a private group. I've already got a private group set up. Um, and then we can work individually and do projects together and all that. So if anybody's interested in that, um, you know, I'll let you know more about that when the time comes. If that's working. And I thought of you, Terry. I thought you might like to have that because we can actually go on Zoom and, and, and actually interact together and have fun. All right. So I just burnished it out. Now I'm going to take the, my little water pen. You know, you can you can actually just cut around it with um, a knife or anything. But I like using the water pen, of course. A lot of people use these. But it just kind of makes it easier for your napkin to tear. And, and, and in this case, actually, you know, if you want to tear it off, but you can bake it just like this and then tear your pieces off after the fact. So you just kind of clean it up like that. And it, if it was a, if I had a lot more pieces on there, I would rip them apart. But I'm just kind of pressing them down right now with the water. By the way, you can go right over there with the water like that on the clay, which is kind of cool, too. You can actually get the raw clay wet. Which is kind of cool. All right, so that is your basic technique. That's all you really need to do. This I got my little tip wet. I guess I got it dirty. Not wet, but dirty. So that is literally all you have to do to, besides baking it, of course, it to um to get your decoupage image onto a piece of raw clay, and then you'll just put that in the oven. Anything else you want to do to it, you want to punch holes in it, you want to add a little extra, you can actually bake this and then rebake it and add some other pieces on there, but then you got it. Now, I'll tell you, um, I'm going to set this one aside because that was that's a raw piece and I'll go ahead and cook that one since I, I went ahead and put that on there. Um, but let me show you. So the same concept I did with the big piece here, okay? Another napkin. All I did was burnish it down. I took a piece of paper and I burnished and burnished and burnished. And then I, I threw it on my baking sheet and then I baked it for like 30 minutes. And then this is how it comes out. Now, here's the deal. Um, I watched the YouTube videos on this actually to kind of, you know, get a, get a handle on it. And they all suggested to put, soak your piece in water 
Uh, does the design stay on there? Yes, it does, Terry. It actually stays on pretty good. It's kind of like because the clay is sticky, it just kind of, you know, it basically sticks to the clay. But, you know, is make sure you burnish it down and you're checking, you know, you can kind of look at it sideways and make sure you don't have any air pockets or anything like that before you actually throw in the oven. Okay. But here's the deal. A lot of them were, the, the tutorials I saw said to put this in water and soak it for a few minutes and then you take it out of the water and you lightly rub rub it and you get that surface of the the napkin off and but you know what every time I tried that I didn't really get hardly anything off I felt like there was no like little pills or anything coming off of mine so I just basically think that you can just do it like this and thinking about that if you're doing it like that and you're not going to turn it over you could probably just do it on the actual on your front side you know you don't need to turn it over backwards because the front side will show now what i'm going to end up doing with this to to make sure that it pops out a little bit more it's kind of nice in this in this coloring if you don't want it um like you know all shiny but it does help it and it helps preserve it too like with mod podge you know it does give a little bit of a satin coat a little bit of gloss on it i am going to gloss this with this uh this is a uh, from lowe's I like to use this. It's a water-based clear gloss. And I like to use that on the polymer pieces on the polymer clay because it doesn't, um, it doesn't, there's certain clays, um, excuse me, there's certain sealers that will react with the polymer clay but over time in yellow. But this one is a pretty good one, that poly, polycrylic. All right, so I got that. But I did want to actually go ahead and put a little grunge grunge on this before I um, did it. I, I, you know, I'm getting on the little grunge wagon. I think that Miss Jan Hauser is kind of getting to me on that one. So I'm just going to spray a little bit on, of, of brown on this just to kind of give it a little touch. And then while I'm letting this, um, this is my instant coffee, by the way, guys, I don't want to overdo it. Oh, gosh, please don't tell me it's like I didn't clean off my thing and now it's stuck. There we go. So I can get it to start spraying, spraying off on my floor. I don't care about my floor because my floor is dirty. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can get to spray a little bit. I don't want to mess it up. But I do just want to give it a little bit of an aged effect on there. And then um, after this dries, and I'll go ahead and throw the poly coat on. And it'll uh, it'll make it shine up a little bit. All right, what kind of, uh, any kind of glue? No, like I said, when you, when you do it on the raw clay, you don't need to, um, you don't need any glue on it. It'll, um, it sticks to the, it bakes into the clay. The, the, uh, yeah the paper actually like bakes onto the clay because you know the clay is sticky before it goes in all right so i'm just going to kind of leave that like that i don't know if i need to brush on a little bit more my little squirter thing is a little bit funky and i don't want to squirt it everywhere i just kind of want to do it around the edges okay so i'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and then um i'll um, come back to that and show you what we're going to do now we're going to do the bowl OK, by the way, I, you know, you guys stick around because I do have my giveaway tools set up. Anybody doesn't know what that is. That's basically uh, my little stream yard tool. And I'll, I'll do a giveaway every time I go on a live in, a, in an event. Uh, I do a little giveaway. And so you want to make sure and hang out for that at the end. And then I'll give you the hashtag word and we'll go through that. All right. So that's going to sit for a second. I'm going to put it over here by my fan. Another thing I'm going to do, too, with this to finish it out. And I need you guys to give me some ideas. Um, I'm going to I went ahead and I've punched holes around the edges. I want to take some embroidery. That's funny that actually I was kind of inspired by Deborah at Sacred. So about the embroidery thread, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use a board thread. I'm going to do like a little I'm going to sew a little loop around this thing or like a little not seen, but just stitch it, a little stitching around the edges. But I'm not sure about colors, guys. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I'm kind of leaning towards this green, but I've got this, um, the gray is kind of cool too, but it might be a little bit too dark. And then I've got a brown here. So you guys can kind of tell me which one you think would look best with as a border edge on this thing. And remember, I've got my little guy here that's going to sit, that's got blues. It's kind of like light blues and, and white, and it's going to sit like that. So ever how that's going to finish up with an edge, I just kind of need to determine what color I should go with. If you guys got any ideas on that, yeah, that would be great. All right. So like I said, I'm gonna, let's set that aside for a minute. Put that over here. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this little bowl here. So you can do any kind of little flower bowl. You can do them bigger than this too. This is just the one that's going to go coordinate with that little 
piece there. So um, what you do with this is once again, I, I took the actual bowl itself and I turned it over and on a piece of paper, but I made it larger, like a circle larger than what I need because it has to slump inside the bowl. And then I just did a like a little pre-hand kind of cut the petals and then I cut this out to make myself a template, okay? Now here's my little clay pieces that are gonna be for the template. Um, since this is not gonna be, you don't want it to stick in the bowl, what you wanna do is put a little bit of mineral oil in here, just a very lightning on your touch and that way it'll pop out without it, but it kind of helps, you know, you as far as like considering breakage or anything like that. And you'll be able to put your, um, your piece down in there, your clay down in there. And when it, once it's hard and it's cooled, you'll just be able to, you know, just kind of slide your finger in there and pop it right out. Okay. All right. So now like I said, I'm not going to put the Vaseline in there now because this is just a sample. I'm not making it. I'm just showing you guys how I actually put this together. Okay. And let's see, I got to look at my timing here. I'm up at three o'clock. Okay. I got plenty of time. I'm doing good. All right. So to make one of these little flower bowl guys, you know, this is like a little poppy kind of effect. It doesn't have to be a poppy, but you know, that's kind of the idea I was going with with this one. What you want to do is lay your pieces down kind of like that. You're going to have to adjust them a little bit as you go, okay? To kind of, you know, figure out where, they, where they're where they going to lie. And then you want to make sure you press it. You want to press it against the back of the bowl. You don't want to have a pocket in there. You want to press it up against that glass, all right? So you're going to do that one and then take one and then go on the opposite side. Don't worry about it like um, matching in the corners because you're going, number one, you can maneuver that like kind of finagle a little bit once you get it in there and or you're going to have um, this, you know, I, I use this one, but you know, a little center of some sort that'll kind of cover up anything that's, that's um, not looking too good when you put it together, but they usually overlap pretty decent if you cut it right. OK, and you don't want the petals to be like, um, you know, way overlapping. You want to be able to actually see the petals themselves. So let's see. Let's kind of do it like that. Like I said, you might have to lift a couple of times and kind of press it in there. The clay is pretty sticky right now for me, guys. So let me get a little bit of cornstarch. That's always the trick to put on your fingers. It's like flowering your fingers. Great with you. Hey there. Hey there, girlfriend. It's good to see you. And I'm welcome to the craft bunch. Uh, I loved your sheep, your little sheep round. That was really cool. All right. So anyway, so I've got three petals in there right now. Okay. These are so fun to make and you can make, like I said, this is called the slumping method. Um, the, uh, there, you can actually turn the bowl over and do it a different method as well, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but this is, like I said, this is a slumping. Now, I am putting this last petal in here, and um, if you're if you're putting it together, and then you realize that maybe your petals like it overlapping, you're going to have obviously two petals that overlap the other two petals. That's the way it's going to look. Okay, something like that. And uh, you can always trim off a little bit, like if you feel like one of your petals is being hidden a little bit, which I do believe that is the case on this one. You can take an exacto knife, or I've got my little tissue blades here. And you just cut a little section off, okay, and make it just work it till it looks right for you. But that's basically what you're gonna get, okay. And like I said, you want to press, make sure you press them all up in there, okay. Press, 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 make sure it's touching that glass, okay. Now we're not done yet. We got to put a little interest in this one. See how there on this one, I actually like um, made it look a little bit thinner on the top, and all that requires is just you can just take your thumb. And then you just press it like that. You don't want to make it super thin because you want to be able to have a little bit of durability out of the oven. But you can just press it in like that. You can pre-press it before you put it in there too, which is what I did with that one. Or you can just do it, you know, while it's actually in the bowl too. So I'm just pressing that little pet, make it look more like a soft petal at the edge. Okay. And once you do that, now, I also went ahead and decided to put a little bit of, a, uh, you can see some small lines, like little lines in here. They're, they're very delicate, but there are a few little lines in there. Okay, so the way you do that is simply lightly, actually, you can, the, probably the best thing to do if you're heavy handed is you can use a butter knife. The back of a butter knife works real good, or you can use your X-Acto knife, something that you can just create like a little line with. 
and you just kind of go like this, kind of start from the center and work out. You know, I didn't do that this time, but that's kind of the traditional style. Start from the center and that way your your pedals, because they kind of splay, they, they kind of curve, the little lines kind of curve, and your pedals are curved. So you want to create that little center piece first and then just kind of curve the rest of them out like that. Okay. What are you doing on time? Am I good with time? I got a lot of time. This is not like me. I usually don't have a lot of time. Okay, so I got that. So basically, you're looking something like that, guys. You see that? Okay, now I've got a little bit of space in there, but I'm not worried about that. Um, I'm actually, you know what? I am a little bit worried about that. I'm going to bring that over because my little circle piece, I don't think will actually cover that. But you, like I said, the clay is sticky and you can just kind of move it over and cover that little spot up. Okay, don't, there. So that's kind of what you're going to look like in, until you get your little centerpiece on. Now for your centerpiece, actually, no, that one's too big. Yeah. It's too big. You can take, like I said, if you don't want it to be this big, you can just cut a, a simple circle. It doesn't have to be with a decorative image in there, but I, I kind of like the decorative image. Um, let me get this little, pay, little piece of clay rolled out because I didn't get that done yet. So how's everybody doing today? Got to get some more eyeballs in here. What's up with that? I know, like I said, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus and I've got to get back in the groove. It felt kind of weird not being, not having a live for a week. It's kind of like, you know, you just get used to doing something and then you feel a little bit lost. But it was kind of like bittersweet. It was kind of a nice break, but then it was kind of like I missed it. So I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. Thank you there, Miss T. I appreciate that. All right. So anyway, I'm just taking my little stamp again, same one I used before. And I'm just running this on here. And then I'm going to take my cutter and cut it out. Uh, I said it does not matter. You can use any image and I actually cut that too big. I was off center. I wasn't paying attention, which happens often. Then I'm just going to take it and kind of run it around there, make it a little bit smaller. It's not perfect, but I don't care because, you know, it's not going to be perfect in nature anyway. But I try. And then if you do need, you can always just kind of like press it together and reshape it and get it to where you want it. Because the polymer clay is very um, flexible until it's baked. OK, then we're going to lift that guy up there. And we're going to, I guess I'm going to go ahead and put this together because if I'm going to go ahead and color it, <laughs> I may as well do that, right? I'll show you how I colored it and everything. So, of course, there's lots of ways you can color it. Well, hello, Miss Stephanie Brooks. How are you, girlfriend? Long time no talk, see? It's good to have you here. Good to have you here. How you been, darling? All right. So then, you know, you got your little circle guy. Okay. It's kind of like a little medallion, whatever. You know, you kind of press that down on there. Um, and then you're done. Well, I, is it a little off center? I mean, I kind of fix this. I think I got a little off center there, guys. But it's kind of like organic in a sense anyway. I don't like it actually perfect. I don't like much of anything perfect as far as my crafts go. Or is a little bit more on the whimsical side. Okay, so there you go. You got a little flower bowl. All right, so now um, coloring it. See, on this one, I actually, hey there, Miss Wendy. How are the kids? You get them from school? And Lydia, oh, everybody's finally starting to show up. Well, I'm halfway through my craft and now everybody's coming up. Oh, you're at the waiting room. Boy, you and your mom are just having a time, aren't you, darling? Um, anyway, so you can see that I actually put these little guys around here just to kind of give a little interest and all that. Denise, hi, Denise. Hey, how are you? Uh, put them just for interest. So, like I said, now we've got this white piece. You could also use colored clay, guys. You don't have, I just went white because of that's what I wanted to go with in my piece. You can get any color uh, of your polymer clays and use them and make these little guys. And uh, I, I think, uh, who was it? Somebody bought, I did one when we did a Pioneer Woman um, event. And I made a really cute red one with blue and all this kind of stuff like turquoise and uh, Somebody ended up buying that. I think it was Cindy who bought that. Anyway, hold on. Before I finish this up, I'm going to show you something else. So this is this one here was my first idea. OK, I was first going to show and go with this. I will finish this out now. But this is another type of clay. This is my uh, my heavy duty uh, super sculpty clay that I like this mainly for modeling. But I like it because it's, it's a little bit heavier and firmer. And this is going to be a piece that it's going to be like a wall pocket with some little flower 
pocket things on there for plants and it'll be hanging up. But this one you can see is not, um, I actually put this one in the water and tried to, you know, clean it off like they said. And it's like, there was nothing coming off. So I just left it like this, but you can see here that I did do a little bit of an edge. I'm going to rebake this. That's why I didn't do the whole thing yet because I'm going to add my little pockets on here and then rebake it again. But you can see the poly, the poly coat, how it brings the color out like that. So yeah, like I said, but I did do the same method. I laid this down, I burnished it and then I baked it. Okay. But if uh, you're finding that you're not being able to get much of the back surface over here, I just turn it over on the regular side and do it that way and be done with it. Like I said, you can always decoupage it with Mod Podge if you want, but this is just a way to bake it into the clay. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys that. And I will finish this one up. It'll be kind of cool. It's going to have like two or three little pockets with some plants hanging down and all that. I'm good. Kids are keeping me busy organizing big events coming up next weekend. So, all righty. Well, good for you. Is the event an online event or an in-person event? So anyway, yeah, so that's that. All right, flower. Let's get back to the flower. So a couple ways, if you're not familiar, if you haven't watched some of my videos, how to uh, color these things. This one, I wanted it to be soft because I felt that the napkin was a little bit soft, is I use my pastels. Um, you guys have probably seen me do that several times, but um, you can use mica powders, and the mica powders are loose, dry pigment powders, but they're metallics. And if you don't want anything metallic-y, then you can use these guys. These are just chalk pastels that um, you take your little exacto knife, you shave a little bit off, and then you've got some loose, loose powder in there. And then you just basically do that. I don't think I'm going to do blue with this one since I'm doing another one. Let's see. What color? Any, mini, mighty, mo. Maybe I'll do, I don't know. Let's see. Let's do a red. Let's do a red center. Oh, I've already got some or orange. Orange is kind of cool, too. Maybe I'll do red and orange. You can kind of blend the colors together, too, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, so I take like a loose, funky little loose brush here, and then you're just going to lightly put some on there and kind of tap it off. And you can see I got a little bit on there, and then you can just kind of go this number. It's kind of got a little bit of brown in there, too, but that's fine. I don't care. I'll mix it up a little bit. And you just kind of shake it and this, and then you can just do this little light touch to it and create that little center. I'll put some yellow in there, too, and see what happens. This, this one I'm just kind of playing around with. But it's kind of nice because it doesn't over, you can use uh, acrylics, of course, but it does not oversaturate. You know, when you're using these, it doesn't oversaturate your, uh, your paint. And yes, you can put it on when it's raw or you can paint it after when it's dry either way. But the, uh, as far as the past, the dry pigments go, you have to do them with the raw because they get sticky. Okay. So that's that. That's the, basically how you do that. And you can add, you know, like I said, you can kind of mix your colors up a little bit if you want. Let's see if I can get a little bit more red in there. I'm kind of blowing it a little bit to kind of see if I can make it move. Once you get it in there, it does start like, you know, sticking. So you got to make sure that you just kind of lightly, like, I just kind of build up a little bit. I lightly, lightly do it. And then uh, maybe I'll turn this one, put a little bit of yellow in this too. I kind of like the idea of when I'm a yellow, I love sunflowers, guys. That's simply do a lot of sunflower stuff. Where was I with this with the red? Okay. All right. So you guys get the basic idea. Okay. You get the basic idea of what we're doing here with this. And um, it's kind of nice to play around with these and with the colors and stuff. Also, I mean, you can do different petal designs too. You don't have to do the whole poppy, like big old flat petal. You could cut the little sliver petals, you know, like the long um, pointy petals that you do in um, like sunflowers or other flowers. And you can just do each little individual petal like that and make them pointy. This is just like I said, I was going kind of like with the whole poppy feel on this one. And that's why I did that. But see, it just, this is a nice way, like it also too, if you're doing figurines, like you're doing a person's face or a little animal or something, and you're using the white clay, this is a good way to get your blush tones and things like that on there, like the cheeks and whatnot, without overdoing it. Um, like I said, you can use the acrylics, but they will be a little bit heavier, you know, on your, on your piece. All right, so the, I'll add some more touches to that later on, okay, when I play around with it some more. But that's basically how you're working with your... Um, your pigments, your chalk pastels, you get the, don't get the oil pastels. It's got to be the dry chalk pastels if you're doing that. 
Okay, where am I at now? So basically what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and put some poly seal on this guy. And you will see how it kind of pops up with the color. See what happens here. So yeah, I got the little coffee stain on there. I think it's kind of, it's dry enough. So I'm going to take this poly seal. If you guys aren't familiar with this stuff, it's pretty cool. I use it quite for quite a bit of things. Um, it, I think it says it's for outdoor, it's just, what, it is water-based. Um, it's pretty much, I use it for my crafts and things like that. Hey, Justin, how's it going there, dude? Justin's coming up at six o'clock tonight, guys. And everybody don't know Justin. And you, I don't know, you're just I don't, under a rock <laughs> as far as the crafty group goes. Because Justin's the man, as far as man about town. So and I'm sure he's got something fun to do. All right, so what I'm doing here at this point, like I said, I got my clay piece. I've got it decoupaged. I am going to add this little poly coat on here just to make it pop, bring the colors out a little bit more. And of course, it'll take us, it'll take a little minute to dry. It dries pretty darn fast. I kind of like to put two coats on it. So um, yeah. And by the way, you know, for those, like I said, I did mention before, but Christy Sloan is up after me. She's my artful adventure. You guys have got to go check her out. She's a hoot and she's talented on top of that. And she's just a fun person to hang out with. So, you know, like I said, she's coming on right at around three o'clock. Is that my done at three? I think I'm done at three. Oh, see how pretty that is now. See how that came up, all those colors on the napkin. See, see, I'm not usually what for, I used to do decoupage furniture years ago. Girl, guys, I've been around. I've been doing this stuff forever and a day, but I'm, you know, I'm stuck on clay right now. So I'm doing a lot of, a lot of clay work, but the idea that you can actually decoupage on a piece of polymer clay, now that's cool, isn't it? Because you get your mind can just think about what can I do now? If I can sculpt a piece of clay, then I can add a decoupage napkin on it and you know go to town. So I'm just showing you another thing that you can do with this versatile medium. All right, so that's that. Actually, I might not even need two coats on that. That came up pretty nice. And that was with the napkin actually turned backwards, guys. So technically, you know, like I said before, you know, if you didn't want to. The, the original idea is to flip it over and do it from the back side and then peel off that like water, get the water and then roll that off the pillow. That didn't work like it did for me. It didn't work. So you could literally just, you know, take the raw clay, put this this particular, put it on the front ways on the right side up and then just bake it that way. And then you're good to go. OK, so that's that. Now, the only thing left to do, really. Hey, Kendra, how are you? Hey, 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 it's good to have you, girly. So the, the last thing I'm going to do is just add my little bowl to it. Um, like I said, it's just a decorative piece. I kind of like saw a piece like this on Pinterest and it's what inspired me. But theirs was actually more like a dipping bowl. It was a ceramic and it was actually had this piece kind of curved up. So you can kind of use it as like a little bowl to put like little dip or something in there. But I'm making this more of a decorative piece right here that will just be for wall hanging because I love flowers and I'm all about the flowers. All right. Should I polyurethane this or should I leave it? Should I leave it? Leave it. Should I leave this kind of like natural or polyurethane? Should it be matte or gloss? Matte or gloss? Give me a thumbs up if you want it matte, heart if you want it gloss. Let me know, guys, because I'd like to know what's going on. Um, I Like I said, and then, I like I said, after that, I've got mm, eight minutes left, and I'm going to do my giveaway tool here in a minute, so you guys will see that. I am going to put that, everybody's saying hearts, hearts for gloss. Okay, so you want me to gloss it up. I also need you guys to help me with my, because I'm going to stitch this out around the edges. I'm going to stitch it out, and I need to know what color. Do you guys like the brown? The green or the gray better. The gray, I think I'm going to rule out the gray. So we're just going to go with either brown or green. And I'm going to put a stitching around the whole thing just to add a little extra interest. So I'm, I'm leaning towards the green, guys. I'm kind of leaning towards the green. But you guys tell me, brown or green. I'm going to go ahead and polyurethane this too while we're in. I'll let this guy dry up. All right. Where are we at here? So, yeah, like I said, events coming up. I've got a lot of events coming up in the next few weeks. This I, I took my week off, and now I'm going to be like, Going to town. What did I do with my darn brush? Here it is. All right. Green. Okay. Green. I mean, gloss. Matte. Okay. I got matte. I got green. I got green. Green is my favorite color. That's one of my favorite colors too, Denise. And I love this green color. It's kind of like a uh, kind of olivey. It's real pretty. 
So, and it, there is a, some pretty green in there. Um, but I thought maybe the brown might be nice too as an accent, but I don't really have any other brown in the piece except for the little bit of staining, you know, with the coffee that I did. So, yeah, so I'm just putting a little poly coat on this guy too because it seems like everybody wanted me to do that. Some said matte and some said poly, but since the, the little guy is kind of shiny, I figured we'll just do it all shiny. Make it all shiny and pretty and new. <laughs> did you guys have a good Easter? Everybody have a good one. Get with family. Like I said, my birthday was yesterday, and sometimes it does fall on Easter. So we went away for the weekend, hung out with my husband's crazy local Mexican family, and they smashed cake in my face. If you look on my personal profile on my Facebook, you'll see where I didn't know that was a thing. They also take eggs and fill them with flour and confetti and bop you over the head with them. Has anybody ever heard of that? So we were outside, thank God, nobody's house. But the kids were going around finding the eggs and they would come up to you and they go bop and bop you and you have flour all over you. I've never heard such a thing. I, you know, I guess it's just a, something from Mexico, but because everybody else I ask has never heard of anybody getting floured with an egg before. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm glad I did put the gloss on there. It looks, it's hard to maybe see in the camera, but it just, it does bring it out a little bit. It makes it kind of pretty. Okay. Yeah, so I got floured on my head and I got cake on my face last this past weekend. <laughs> so <laughs> at least I clean up good, right? I saw that frosting on your face. I know, I know. She just smashed my head down. And I knew she was going to do it. Robert was standing right behind me. I said, you get away because I know you're going to do it. And then his sister, a little short thing that she has to turn around, did the same thing. I'm like, I should have known Belinda. She's a, she's her, she's definitely her brother's sister. All right. So they're still a little wet. But you guys get the basic idea, okay? And there goes my five-minute alarm. So what we're going to do right now, stop. We're going to stop my alarm on my phone. I'm glad I started doing that. It keeps me organized. But you guys get to see the after. I, I will obviously, I'll have to stitch it once it's dry. But I'll put that little stitching around there. And I think it's going to be real pretty. And so there you go. And I'll glue it back and glue it all together. Um, so, okay, right now we need to do our giveaway. So all you guys that are not familiar with this, go. we're going to do a hashtag, and I got my giveaway tool set up. So um, we're going to thank you, darling, for the birthday wishes. I did. I had a fun one. Um, let me turn my camera up. Let me turn my camera up and talk to you guys for a second here. We're going to go ahead and do our hashtags. All right. So um, the hashtag word today is retro. R-E-T-R-O, hashtag retro. You guys go ahead in the comments if you want to win a $5 Amazon gift certificate, because that's what I do every time. Retro, you put hashtag retro in there, and then I'll do my little giveaway tool, and it actually picks a winner for me. It just spins around, and it's kind of fun to watch. So let's go ahead and put our hashtag retros in there. Denise says, what kind of birthday tradition is that? Flowering and egging the birthday. I know. Well, the... The cake in the face was the birthday part. The flowering with the eggs was an Easter thing. So they, I got both. I got flowered on my head and I got cake in my face because it was the same weekend. So, yeah. Okay, let's get rec hashtag retro, guys. I'll give you guys a couple minutes. If you've never seen this before, it's kind of fun to watch. It's a little – I use StreamYard when I do my, uh, my live platform. And uh, they have a little feature on there that lets you pick a, pick a word and then it scrolls through it. And you'll see it here in a second. But um, yeah, did you guys like this project? Did anybody learn anything about um, clay and, you know, working with it? And did anybody think that you could ever decoupage on polymer clay? Anybody ever think about that? I don't think a lot of people have thought about that. But like I said, even if it's not a flat image, people decoupage on their coffee pots and all that kind of thing. So if you were to make an image from clay, a ball, whatever it may be, or a little figurine, you could actually add some decoupage to it, with, with, you know, the, the way that I showed you how to do it. Um, and like I said, if you had air dry clay, you could probably do it with air dry clay too. But of course, your air dry clay would have to be dry, like totally dry, because it would be like a hard surface, like most things like wood and things like that, that you decoupage on. All right. So anyway, that's pretty cute. I, I am really liking that. It turned out well. My sunflower one's going to be cool too when I get that done. All right. Hashtag retro. Everybody got their word in there. I've got three minutes. I just want to make sure everybody has a chance to get it in there. What I do is I take uh, whoever the winner gets picked, I write it down on my paper. And at the end of the month, um, for all my lives, I know I'm kind of putting a little bit of a few funds up there, but I do that because I appreciate people 
hanging out and joining me and you know the fact that you're spreading the love and all that um is i i give the the winners from each of my live events um i will get your email address and then matter of fact whoever the winner of this you send me your email address and then um i will pop you that five dollar gift certificate from amazon so that's pretty cool huh all right okay now and it just makes it easier i'm not good at like you know taking names and all that kind of stuff so this is the way i do it makes my life quicker and easier now let's see i think we got time i got two minutes let's go ahead and do that giveaway tool like i said you guys go over and see miss christy sloan and watch the rest of the crafters um let me do first thing i got to do is i got to concentrate for a second so i don't mess up here i got to share my screen share screen and i got the giveaway tool share that make sure you guys can see it okay we see it now everybody's got their retro in there thank you i appreciate you let's go ahead and start collecting these these names and see who the winner is draw okay isn't that cool look at that guys do, 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 do. i hope it's somebody that didn't win last month lisa let's all right all right so lisa i don't know if i do have your your uh your email address but you can send that to me and um so yeah congratulations can you but see that to me that's a way that makes it very honest because the machine's doing all the work for you i'm not doing anything so even if I have comments are coming and people are like i can't see you at least the machine sees it all right so my time's just about up i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and we're gonna you guys go over and see miss christy and she's got something really cool for you i know she does so i will see you guys next week i got two events next week so hang tight and um say hello and let everybody know what i'm doing bye bye love you